Hello there, space fleet. As you starship troopers get ready to head out toward the galaxies, it's time to talk to you seriously about the new dimension you're going to be working in. It's called the complex number system, and we're heading there now. Think of the blue circle as the number system we're used to. There it is. The real number system. It's got the numbers we know so well. Fractions, decimals, percents, integers, all kinds of roots. And there's only one thing that doesn't exist there, actually, that we have come across lately that we could need. And that's that taking an even root, like a square root of a negative number, it, it, it's just not done. It does not exist. D and E, the square root of negative one does not exist in the number system we're used to, the real number system. But the real number system is entirely enclosed in a much larger number system called the complex number system. And what makes the complex number system different is that the square root of negative one does exist there. And it's used very commonly by um, electrical engineers. OK, so it does really exist. But it's a much bigger number system than the real number system, and it includes all of the numbers in the real number system, plus its own numbers that look like this. The square root of negative one is called I, a lowercase i. And numbers have two parts in the complex number system. The real part that looks like a real number is a real number, and the imaginary part. Imaginary does not mean the same thing here as it does in real life. If we talk about something being imaginary, we talk about something that doesn't exist. But that exists. There are political reasons that imaginary is called I. When Gauss finally proved that imaginary numbers exist, he insisted on including an I to stand for the square root of negative one. Again, kind of as a way of flipping off all the mathematicians who had insisted through the centuries that imaginary numbers didn't exist, that they were just imaginary. Well, guess what, guys? They're not just imaginary. So a real part and a complex part make a complex number. We call this, I didn't write it down, isn't that silly? Let me do it now. A plus B I form. That's complex form. Let's see if there's anything that I didn't write. Real numbers can be turned into complex numbers. But imaginary numbers, like 2i, can never be turned into a real number. 
2i can be given a complex form just by putting zero plus in front of it because zero is a real number. And three can become a complex number, three plus zero i. So real numbers can be complex numbers and imaginary numbers can be complex numbers, but imaginary numbers can never be real numbers. This will all make more sense to you as we go along. The first thing we're going to do is express numbers that don't exist in the real number system in imaginary form. Take the square root of negative 11. Change negative 11 to negative 1 times positive 11. Then take the square root of negative 1 times the square root of positive 11. We call the square root of negative 1 I. So the square root of 11, I, with I behind, not underneath the radical, is how, <clears throat> excuse me, is how this would be written. Or sometimes, and you have to read the instructions, you're asked to change a of uh, uh, this, the square root of negative 11, into a plus b i form. Express it in a plus b i form. So first you go through these steps and change it to the square root of 11 times i, and then this is a pure imaginary number. It goes in the second position in the complex number form, and in the real number position, we put a zero. So that if you're asked to write the square root of 11i in complex form, this is how you would do it. Zero plus the square root of 11i. Let's do it again. The square root of negative 16 would give you an error message in the real number system. But change negative 16 to negative 1 times 16. Then change that to the square root of negative 1 times the square root of positive 16. The square root of negative 1 is i. The square root of 16 is 4, so that's 4i. That's a pure imaginary number. And if you're asked to change this to a plus bi form, you would put a 0 for the real part, plus 4i. Or you might just be asked for this. It all depends on what the instructions ask you. Now here's a more complicated version. The square root of negative 75 is the square root of negative one times the square root of 75. That's going to be the square root of negative one times the square root of 25 times three and you break down the square root of 25 times 3 to the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. So what the square root of negative 75 becomes is the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. Well, we know that the square root of negative 1 is i, and the square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of 3 is just the square root of 3. So all together, this number is 5 times the square root of 3 times i. This is a pure imaginary number. To change it to a plus bi form, you would put a 0 where the real number belongs, plus 5 plus the square root of 3 
times I. Okay. Now we're going to add and subtract complex numbers. Negative two plus five I is going to be added to seven plus five I. I color coded this at first. Negative two plus five I plus seven plus five I. You add the real parts together and you add the imaginary parts together so that you have negative two plus seven, which is five, plus five I plus five I is 10 I. So your answer is five plus 10 I. And that's what you would write in the answer box. Here's the answer box. And you would type 5 plus 10 I. That's one number that has two parts. OK, now we have this complex number plus this complex number. 5 minus 4 I plus 6 minus 3 I. And I color coded it. 5 minus 4 I plus 6 minus 3 I. You add the real parts together and the imaginary parts together. 5 plus 6 is 11. And negative 4 I minus 3 I is negative 7 I, which is minus 7 I. So in the answer box, you're going to type 11 minus 7i. Now let's subtract. We have 13 plus 5i minus 8 plus 2i. You're going to have to distribute that minus sign to both of these terms. Color coding it, I made 13 plus 5i blue and 8 plus 2i with the negative sign distributed green, negative 8 minus 2i. You add the real parts together. 13 minus 8 is 5. And you add the imaginary parts together or combine the imaginary parts. 5i minus 2i is positive 3i. So that gives you 5 plus 3i. And that's what you type in the answer box. Right there, five plus three I. Now, 12 plus six I minus five minus seven I. We're going to have to distribute that minus sign to the five and to the minus seven I. That will give us minus five plus seven I. And I color coded it again, 12 plus six I minus five plus seven I. 12 plus six I minus five times seven I. 12 minus 5 is 7, and 6i plus 13i is 19i. And that is what we will type in the answer box in 
my math lab. Seven plus 19 I. And so we've added and subtracted complex numbers. Not super hard. This will take some memorizing. And you do have to memorize this. I equals the square root of negative one. I squared is the square root of negative one squared, which is negative one. I to the third is I squared times I, which is negative one times I, which is negative I. I to the fourth equals I squared times I squared, which is negative one times negative one, which is positive one. And of course, I to the zero power is one, simply because every number raised to the zero power is one. So we have this cycle, really, of numbers that you need to memorize. I, Just think of that as being I. It's the square root of negative one. I squared is negative one. I to the third is negative I. And I to the fourth is positive one. Now what we're going to do is we're going to simplify powers of I with these four steps in the cycle. Consider I to the 35. Because I have one, two, three, four different powers of I here before I get to positive one, I'm going to divide four into 35 to find how many I to the fourths I have in I to the 35. Four into 35 is eight. Eight times four is 32. Subtract 35 minus 32 and you get remainder three. Now what this means is there are going to be eight I to the fourths, and then an I to the third. That's what the remainder gives you. So you have I to the fourth times I to the fourth times I to the fourth times I to the fourth. We could make a little song. I to the fourth times I to the fourth times I to the fourth times I to the fourth. People pay me to not sing. Times I to the third. Okay, I to the fourth is one, so we'll have one times 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 one, which is all one, right? All of these ones multiplied together are just, let's write it here, one. And then I to the third is negative I. 1 times negative i is negative i. So i to the 35th power is really, wait for it, negative i. All powers of i can be broken down into one of these either I or negative one or negative I or positive one. I to the 39. I divide four into 39 to find how many I to the fourths will go into I to the 39. Well, nine of them. 
9 times 4 is 36. 39 minus 36 is 3. So we end up with remainder 3 again. How boring. I to the fourth times 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 I to the third. There are nine of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are nine I to the fourth, which give you one times 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 one. which is one. I to the third is negative I. So again, we've got one times negative I, which is negative I. I to the 39 is negative I in disguise. Let's try I to the 52. We're going to do the same thing. Four, into 52, let's see, 4 goes into 5 1 times, 1 times 4 is 4, 5 minus 4 is 1, bring down the 2. 4 goes into 12 3 times, 3 times 4 is 12, 12 minus 12 is 0, so we have remainder 0. We're going to have 13 i to the fourth. I really don't want to keep writing I to the fourth. We know that I to the fourth is one. So we'll have one times 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 one. There are 13 of them. That's one. And then remainder zero which I suppose we could have written here as I times zero, which also would be a one. And we would get the answer one. Okay. So this would be the answer you would put in the answer box this would be the answer you'd put in the answer box, and this would be the answer you would put in the answer box. There, there, and there. Cool. Now that you know all that, that I is I, it's also the square root of negative one, I squared is negative one, I to the third is negative I, and I to the fourth is one. We are ready to multiply. Well, actually I have to do this first. Six I raised to the third power is going to be six to the third times I to the third, which is 216. That's what six times six times six is. And I to the third is negative I so negative 216i is going to be our answer. And if you're asked to write this in complex form, you would write zero plus negative 216i, which is zero minus 216i. So either way, if you're asked to write this in a plus b, I form, that's what that would be. Now we're going to multiply and I color coded these again, just to help, to try to help. Four plus eight I times seven minus nine I, you foilers, if you remember how to foil, just foil. But it's not taught anymore, and I'm going to teach it the way the book teaches it. So we take four from 
the first set of parentheses and multiply it by the second set of parentheses. Right there, four from the first set of parentheses and multiply by the second set of parentheses. And then the plus eight I from the first set of parentheses and multiply that by the second set of parentheses, seven minus nine I. I distribute the four, I distribute the eight I, and what I get is 28 minus 36 I plus 56 I minus 72 I squared. That will give me 28, negative 36 I plus 56 I give me plus 20i, and I have minus 72 times negative 1, because that's what i squared is. Negative 72 times negative 1 is plus 72. That's a real number. So I will add 28 and 72 to plus 20i, and I'll get 100, because this is 100 plus 20i. And that's what we would write in the answer box in my math lab. Excuse me. We do the same thing with six plus four i times six plus five i. I take the six from the first set of parentheses and multiply it by the second set of parentheses. And then I take the plus four I and multiply it by the second set of parentheses. I distribute the six, I distribute the four I, and what I get is 36 plus 30 I plus 24 I plus 20 I squared 30i plus 24i is 54i. So I have 36, uh, 36 plus 54i plus 20 times i squared, which is 20 times negative 1, which will end up being minus 20. So I'll combine 36 minus 20, which is 16, plus 54i, and that's what I would write in the answer box. Oops. There. Try to get that out. Okay, you have to whisper. And again, Oh, but this is so different. This is so cool. These are conjugates. The eights are the same, the six i's are the same, but the signs between are different. Well, I color coded the first set of parentheses, color coded the second set of parentheses, took eight from the first set of parentheses, multiplied it by the second set of parentheses, and then 6i from the first set of parentheses and multiplied it by the second set of parentheses. And what happens is I get 64 minus 48i plus 48i minus 36i squared. And look at what happens to the i terms. Negative 48i plus 48i is zero i, which is zero. Meanwhile, minus 36 times i squared is minus 36 times negative one, which will give us plus 36. 64 plus 36 is 100. So notice that we no longer have a, um, an imaginary part. 
it totally gets rid of it. Multiplying by conjugates. I love it. This is what I would put in the answer box. Or let's face it, if you were asked to write this in complex form, you could always do this. That's how a real number is made into a complex number. All right, now we're going to square a complex number. And you do it just the same as squaring a binomial, which is what it is. 8 plus 9i times 8 plus 9i. I color code it. 8 from the first set of parentheses times the second set of parentheses plus 9i from the first set of parentheses times the second set of parentheses. That will give us 64 plus 72i plus 72i plus 81i squared. Notice that the 72i's do not cancel out, they double. When you square a binomial, you have middle terms that double. So 72i plus 72i is 144i. Meanwhile, on the end, 81i squared is 81 times negative 1. And that'll be minus 81. So 64 minus 81 is negative 17 plus 144i, and that is what I would put in the answer box in my math lab. Okay, now we have multiplied complex numbers. Now we're going to divide and we're going to do just what we did when we divided radical expressions because i is a radical i is a square root and you're not allowed to have a square root on the bottom of a fraction so here we go i'm going to take 3 plus 5, 3 over 5 minus 11i and multiply it by 1 in the form of 5 plus 11i over 5 plus 11i. Then I multiply 3 times 5 plus 11i and that goes in the numerator and I multiply 5 minus 11i times 5 plus 11i and that goes in the denominator. Now, I distribute the 3. That gives me 15 plus 33i. And on the bottom, I'll have 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 11i minus 11i times 5. That would be if I had gone to all the steps, we would have had this be 5 times 5 plus 11i. Yes, sorry, I forgot where I was for a minute. No, I didn't forget where I was. I forgot where I was mathematically. Minus 11i from the first set of parentheses times 5 plus 11i. And that would give us 20, uh, 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 that would give us 25, well, let's, let's not. Let's just use black. 
25 plus 55i minus 55i minus 11i times 11i is 121 times negative 1. Wonder if I've gone all the way over. Oh, there's still a little room. Good. Okay, 55i minus 55i is 0. And so we're left with 25i minus 121i squared, which is negative 1. So on the bottom, we're going to have 25 plus 121, which is 146. Now, normally, this would be a perfectly good answer, but remember we've got a complex number here and we have to write it in A plus B I form. So this is what we do. 15 over 146 plus 33 over 146 times I. This way I know that A is 15 over 146 and B is 33 over 146. But let's make sure that none of those fractions will reduce. Let's just make sure. 15 divided by 146, math, frac, enter. Nope. That won't reduce. Okay, 33 divided by 146, math, frac, enter. And that won't reduce. Okay, I just thought I should check just to make sure. This is what we will put in the answer box in my math lab. Yes, we're going to do it again. Ooh, that's much too big. We're going to have 6i over negative 3 minus 2i. Now, this can be a little tricky. We'll have 6 plus i over negative 3 minus 2i. The first term is negative 3. That can be a little tricky. The second term is 2i, 2i. The sign change occurs only in the middle. So since we have a minus here, the conjugate will have a plus here. And since we're multiplying this by 1, the numerator and the denominator must be exactly alike. So this is what I have. I multiply the numerators together. I multiply the denominators together. And this is what I have. 6 plus i times negative 3 plus 2i over negative 3 minus 2i times negative 3 plus 2i. Then you multiply either by foiling or by using the distribution method on the top and on the bottom. So you'll have 6 times negative 3 plus 2i plus i times negative 3 plus 2i over negative 3 times negative 3 plus 2i minus negative 2i times negative 3 plus 2i. Then you distribute, 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 and this is what you get. Negative 18 plus 12i minus 3i plus 2i squared over 9 minus 6i plus 6i 
minus 4i squared. Negative 6i plus 6i is 0i, which is 0. Negative 4i, or minus 4i, times negative 1 is plus 4. It's not an i. Negative 4 times negative 1 is plus 4, because i squared is negative 1. So here's what we're left with. We're going to have negative 18, positive 2 times negative 1 is, neg is minus 2, we're going to have minus 20 plus 9i on top and 13 on the bottom. So we'll have negative 20 over 13 plus 9 over 13 times i. And that's our a plus bi form. So this is what I will type in the answer box. OK, now we have another one, which is just the same. I mean, you're going to do the same exact things. Except you've got that square root in there. Who thinks of these things? must be a, a torturer, a sadomasochistic crazy person. Okay, six plus the square root of two i over four minus seven i times one, and one is formed from the conjugate of the denominator. Then I multiply the, t uh, the two numerators together and the two denominators together. And this will give me 24 plus 42i plus the square root of 2i times 4. So that's 4 times the square root of 2 times i plus the square root of 2 times plus 7i, which will give us 7 times the square root of 2 times i squared. Yeah, pretty weird. Over, now we know that the middle terms will zero out <clears throat> when we multiply conjugates. So we'll have 16 minus 49i squared on the bottom, which will be 16 minus 49 times negative 1. Meanwhile, back up top, this is a toughie. I've got 24, I've got two i terms, uh, uh, two i terms here, 42i plus four times the square root of two i. So I combined them in parentheses, 42 plus four times the square root of two in parentheses times i, which means I factored out a common factor from there. Over here, i squared is negative 1. So the real parts, this is a real number now. It's just a real ugly number. That's a math joke. I'll have 24 minus 7 times the square root of 2. This is my real part, and I grouped it together. So now I have my real part real part, and imaginary part, over 16 plus 49, which is 65. 
I take the real part, I put it over 65, plus the imaginary part and put it over 65. This is a, a square root expression, so I cannot combine it with an integer expression. So that's why it looks like that. Same here, this is an integer, this is a square root expression. I can't combine them, so the most I can do is group them. The fraction bar acts like parentheses grouping these two things together so that this is my answer for the real part plus the imaginary part with I at the end. This gives me A plus B I. So this is the very strange answer, I admit, that you will type in the answer box in my math lab. And that's the end. So go back and start this uh, um, wonderful video experience from the beginning and learn all about complex numbers. You're going to need it for college algebra, believe me. And there's going to be an expectation that you already know it. You will have hardly any review. This is your chance to learn it well, especially if you're going into engineering. You'll really have to know it then. OK, talk to you later. Bye bye.